We're moving on now to fallacies that involve what I've called violations of the rules of rational argumentation. The rules in question are things like being able and willing to reason well, not being willing to lie or distort things simply to win an argument, and so on. The first fallacy of this type that we'll look at is more commonly known as the straw man fallacy. For the sake of gender equity, I'm going to call it straw figure, since there's no reason to think that men are the only ones who commit this fallacy or who are taken in by it. The name comes from the practice of using human figures made of straw as practice dummies in military training. Obviously, it's easier and safer to practice certain combat techniques when your opponent is made of straw. The fallacy works like this. Alice offers an argument to Bob. She wants to convince him of something. Let's say that Alice's argument is really pretty strong, like this boxer. Bob isn't sure he can handle this argument. So instead of trying to refute Alice's actual argument, Bob decides to engage a different argument. He decides to engage this straw figure. What is the straw figure? It's a weaker, distorted version of Alice's original argument. Because it's weaker, Bob is easily able to refute the straw figure argument. The straw figure fallacy is complete when Bob does the dance of joy and claims that he has successfully refuted Alice's original argument. But of course, Bob hasn't refuted the original argument. He's only refuted a distorted misrepresentation of it. This is the straw figure or straw man fallacy. This fallacy is often categorized as a fallacy of relevance because the attacks made on the weak straw figure are irrelevant to judging the actual strengths and weaknesses of the original argument. And this is correct, but I prefer to think of it as a violation of the rules of rational argumentation, especially when it involves knowingly and willfully misrepresenting an argument. When someone is willing to do this, they're no longer playing by the rules. They're more concerned with the appearance of winning than with argumentation itself. When you see this going on, you should try to correct the misrepresentation and get the discussion back on track. If it's an honest mistake and the arguer is willing to correct their misunderstanding, that's great. But if you catch them doing this again and again, then there's probably no point in engaging argumentatively with this person, because they've shown you that they're not willing to play by the rules. Let's look at an example. Jennifer has just finished giving her argument against mandatory prayer in public schools. Let's assume that her argument focused on separation of church and state and the First Amendment, and the importance of respecting religious diversity in a multicultural society. Now Bob responds like this. It's clear from your argument that you're really advocating for atheism. But we've seen what state-sanctioned atheism does to societies. Look at Russia under Stalin or China under Mao. Is that what you want for this country? The suppression of religious freedom and the replacement of God by an omnipotent state? It's clear that Bob isn't responding to Jennifer's original argument. He's responding to a distorted misrepresentation of it, a straw figure. Appeals to religious diversity or separation of church and state are just as often made by religious people as by non-religious people. But if Bob can reframe the argument so that it looks like an argument for atheism and abolishing all forms of religious expression, then that's a much easier argument to refute. Rhetorically, this kind of move can be very powerful, and that's why straw figure arguments are so common in public debates on hot-button topics. But from a logic standpoint, they represent a willful refusal to engage in genuine argumentation.